What's up everybody? Welcome to another BroGraph tutorial. I'm Dave Koss and there's been a lot of talk about Legos going on recently. There's the Lego movie. Um, I've been playing with Legos with my daughter a lot. Um, there's even a new plugin that I actually saw. I forget who made it but it was on Lester Banks this week and um, it lets you build things out of Legos. But what I thought was really cool and I don't know if this is true or not really but I read on Reddit or somewhere that when they made the Lego movie they actually were using the digital designer uh, that Lego built and you can get that online and I thought wow so they used their own tool and then they brought that in to their 3d program whatever they were using now I don't I really don't know if that's true because if so it seems like a lot of trouble because you could just build your own sets of Legos it seems like in your 3d program and build stuff easier that way but I wanted to find out if you could actually do that so I downloaded the Lego digital designer and it's a really cool tool um, it's a lot of fun to play with there's tons of parts and tons of things you can do if you're in like the basic designer uh, you've got every part you could possibly imagine and you can just put them here um, on this little plane I mean seriously anything that you can think of it's pretty insane um, all these parts, all the little fun odds and ends, all the people and their their different pieces you could take and you know put some legs out and you can uh, you can grab like a body. Here's some business guy. Um, and you got different heads and stuff like that like over here. Uh, choose this person here. So that's fun. Um, there's a bunch of different command keys There's a bunch of stuff you can do with it you know you can turn pieces and stuff like that it's a really cool tool and there's templates and stuff like that but what I wanted to figure out is how I could get this into Cinema 4D and there is a website uh, you can see <laughs> there's a gallery here they've got like the Nyan cat or whatever it is here and a bunch of other stuff there's um, some of the top stuff and you can vote on them they got the, know, the World Trade Center here they've of course they've got like a reddit thing I don't know it doesn't even look like Legos but I guess it's flat anyway I was looking through here and I wanted to grab a cool little model that that we could bring in and preferably like a car or something like that so now uh, there's a bunch of links that you'll probably need for this tutorial and I've put them in the show notes you can find them here at the bottom of the screen uh, that way you could get to all this stuff because I picked out um, I did links to the the programs that that we're going to use today but I also did a link to the one particular uh, model that might be kind of hard for you to find because there's not like a permalink uh, that's easy to find on this website but the model I found was uh, a DeLorean a back to the future DeLorean that somebody made and I thought that would be a fun one to do so you can look through these you could build your own you can do whatever but if you want to download that link and do it that way you can some of the really complicated models are actually going to be kind of hard for your cinema 4d to handle if you don't have a really powerful computer so keep that in mind maybe start small and build it up and see what your computer can handle so um, we'll pretend that we've downloaded something from the gallery I downloaded um, this file and I will open it in my finder and it is this weird name here but there's my DeLorean and um, I'm gonna open this with the Lego tool I don't need to save that okay now it's brought this in and uh, you can pull it apart or do whatever you want with it but we're not really gonna do anything in here uh, this is fun for building but how do you get this into Cinema 4D you can export from here but you can't export directly to a format Cinema 4D can see so this is actually kind of um, it, this is pretty painless but it kinda of sucks you have to go through two different programs to do this you do an export and then you go to format instead of LXF which is the default Lego format you do LDR I'm gonna uh, call this something easy to remember here uh, like DeLorean I hope I spelled that right probably not alright so I'm gonna go back to finder now and I've got this LDR file and if you actually look at it it's just a bunch of, of coordinates as a text file now if 
you open this other program, which I have a link to. This is kind of like, a, I guess it's like an open source, SourceForge program called LDView. You can open this. And, uh, folder not found. Oh, this is going to happen the first time you open this. Um, I'm just going to download this library. While that's going, I'm going to show you some other things. If you have something like this, this is really cool. You can go to the building guide mode in this first program that I showed you, and it will kind of compile um, these different pieces into like a step-by-step -step instructional, which is really cool. And it looks a lot like the guides you see when you get a Lego set. So you can see it just starts putting it together, and this is all automatic, which is really cool. Just keep hitting this. You even have a slider bar, so you can kind of go through here, and you can see what it looks like to build the different pieces. All right, so hopefully this library is done. Yes, it is. Parts library installed. All right, now I'm going to open up uh, the file that I saved, the LDR over here. LDR, I'm going to open it. And it's going to load up the DeLorean into here. You might get some errors depending on the model. I'm just going to tell it not to show that. Now, you got a nice viewer here. It's going to run, you know, smooth or choppy depending on your system and your video card and all that kind of fun stuff. The other cool thing about this particular program here is that you can go up to parts list. And you can um, put in whatever options you want here. I'm just going to leave it at default. Um, and you can create a parts list. If I save it, it's going to make an HTML file. And it's going to tell me all the part numbers and the color and the quantity that I need to build these. So if you wanted to go and build something in real life that you did here, it would be real easy to look up those part numbers and I guess order them. I don't know if you can order them straight on this site. That'd be really cool if you could. Um, all right, so let's talk about how we get this into Cinema 4D. There's a couple things that you have to know before we export this out of here. Number one is uh, there is there are gaps here in between the pieces. And you have options where you want those gaps and how far apart you want them. And in your preferences, I believe, you can actually set... The gap it's called seam here you can change the seam width so if you wanted to like jack this up let's say to like five which would be ridiculous you can see it kind of separates it out so you can kind of see the insides there um, and that kind of depends on what you want it to look like but I'm going to keep it at the default of 0 0.5 now if you look at uh, let's see if I can remember how to zoom I don't know if I remember how though Oop, there we go I did something there we go. You see on the, um, I don't know what you call them, the studs. On the studs here, they're very, very segmented. And that's because by default, these are pretty low um, so that it doesn't make your video card go crazy. So in your preferences under uh, primitives, you want to take off the low quality studs and you want to do the high resolution primitives when available. And we'll kind of redraw. And now you see if you look at these, they're not so segmented anymore. So what we're going to do now is save this as a uh, 3DS file. So we'll do an export and uh, do a 3DS file. You've got options. You can change the scene width here too if you want. But that's good to go. I'm going to save it right here in the same directory. And um, I'm going to close this and I'm going to close that so I can kind of save my... Uh, CPU and my graphics card and everything for this. I'm going to take the file and open it in Cinema 4D. And the thing about 3DS files is they always kind of come in a little bit segmented at first. So you have to play with them a little bit to get them to look right. And I'll show you how to do that. I'm just going to do the defaults on my import here. Some of these can take quite a while to load too. So you have to have some patience. The other thing is they're going to be pretty um, jumpy in the browser, and that's because there's so much geometry going in on here. 
Um, something you could do is mix all of this down and it's, you know, into one object and it's going to go a lot faster. But I have to warn you, if you try and mix all the geometry down at once, you might actually end up locking up because there's just so much. So you might have to do that in segments too. Um, or there are third party programs that can also kind of do that for you. Now, if we look at this initial um, model here, you can see how jumpy it is, and that's just because, I mean, there's a bajillion uh, different uh, pieces right here. Now, um, the if I go to the project info, I can go in here, and I'm going to select all and unfold all of them. And I'm going to select all of them. Okay. Going back to, there we go, going back to project info, you'll be able to see what we got going on here. We've got 10,000 polygons. It doesn't really seem like that much, honestly. Uh, oh, I don't have children calculated. That's why 155,000. It's getting up there. Um, we won't mix it down right now because it really doesn't matter. But what I'm going to show you here is how to make this look a little bit better than the default when it comes in. I'm going to add a floor and I'm going to add a physical sky. Okay. And when I hit render, there's my model. But you'll see there's some segmenting going on, especially in the little studs, um, in all these little places. And you would say, well, a fong will, fi a fong will fix that. Well, yes, but it won't help it until you make a couple of adjustments. So uh, you should have everything unfolded here. If you don't, just do unfold, right click, and do unfold all. You're going to select the parent of the DeLorean all the way down to the end. So you have everything in here, and you're going to go over here to polygon mode. And you're going to select all. It might take it a second for your computer to respond. So I got everything selected here, and I'm going to go to, up to Mesh, Command, and I'm going to optimize this model. Hit OK. I'm going to go back up here, and this time I'm going to untriangulate all these triangles because it's not going to get a good look with that fong tag. It's not really going to do anything. And uh, now that's finally kind of kicked in there. I'm running screen recording at the same time, so it's kind of bogging me down here. But that's really fixed this up so that now I can go up to the uh, top polygon here and just select this one. I can go back to my regular mode right here. And uh, my regular selection mode, that is. And then under tags, I can go here and do a fong tag. And I can switch the angle limit on and hit render. And we'll get a little less segmenting going on. That looks pretty good. There's no segments there. My floor is a little high, but uh, I can fix that. And um, then if I change my render settings and I go to effect and I turn on global illumination, I'll do a little team render here and see what we get. There we go. It's pretty good, I guess. Um, everything's looking nice and smooth, and uh, that Fong tag helped smooth everything out there. Getting rid of those triangles helped because uh, the Fong tag actually works then. And uh, it's optimized. So that's uh, pretty much how you do that. Just a quick uh, beginning to end on how to get the model into here. And then uh, what you do from, with that, from that point on is up to you. I'd love to see it. Uh, send it to us, please, if you do something with uh, Legos. Um, until next time, I'm Dave Koss, and um, you can follow us on YouTube and Facebook and Twitter, and you can go to brograph.com, and you can see more tutorials there. And that's about it. hope you enjoyed it. Later, bros. It's pretty good, I guess.